Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. How would you like to lose, easily and safely, nearly four pounds in three weeks? Well, that's just what 25 women averaged in a recent test of the Horlick weight control plan. Nearly four pounds in only three weeks. Here's what they did. They substituted a good glass full of Horlick's malted milk for their regular noonday meal. Absolutely nothing else. No exercises, no taking of dangerous fluids. Weight control is largely a matter of calories. The smaller your caloric intake, the less weight you put on. So, the less calories your midday meal has, the greater your loss in weight. Try the Horlick's plan yourself and see if controlling the calories doesn't cut down your weight, too. Remember, Horlicks is a well-balanced food, providing minerals and vitamins essential for health. That's the secret of the Horlick plan's complete safety. You can absolutely rely on this plan. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, yesterday, after much pressure was brought to bear by his wife, Elizabeth, Abner weakened and bought some stock in the Great Western Sterling Silver Company, of which Lum is president. On the prospect of the money they expect to make from their investment in this new mining venture, the citizens of Pine Ridge have nearly all quit work and have embarked on a mad social whirl, the like of which has never been known in the little town. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner down at the Jotham Down store. Lum is just entering. Listen. Well, come in, Lum, come in. Well, congratulations, Abner. I just come over to tell you that you and Elizabeth has been took into the FFTR. Well, good. I know Elizabeth will be proud to hear that. Well, the uh, membership committee just held a meeting and you passed unanimous. And there wasn't a single vote again, you neither. Well, uh, who's on the membership committee? Why, me and Squire Skimp and Professor Willoughby, of course. Professor Willoughby? Yeah, that's that voice teacher from New York. He's a friend of Squire's, you know. Oh, that little wrong. Well, how'd he get in? I thought that SFTR stood for the first family to Pine Ridge. He ain't been here three days. Oh, well, Professor Willoughby's an honorary member. And a fine man, too, Yeah, I ain't got no use for him myself. Why, you don't even know him. I saw him. That's enough for me. I laid it on to him for starting all this society foolishness around here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's the one, all right. I thought. He knows society, too. Him and his wife both, for example. See, they're society folks there in New York. And I still don't like his look. Why, Abner, there's a man that's doing more for this community than anybody that's ever come in here as far back as I can recollect. Learn this manners and etiquette and stuff like that we never would have known any other way. Just think how backwoodsy we was two or three days ago. I never knowed I was big man. Now, what all have you learned? Why, everything. Like that afternoon tea yesterday over at Sister Simpson. First time any of us had ever been to one of them. So natural, none of us knowed how to act. Are you supposed to act different at them? Yeah, you've got to know how to drink your tea and stuff like that. You mean to tell me that you never knowed how to drink tea till yesterday? Well, I thought I did, but I found out yesterday I never knowed the first thing about it. I done better than Caleb Weehunt did, though. He sat over there and poured his tea out in his saucer and blowed on it to cool it. <laughs> That's wrong, huh? Well, of course it is. What does a professor do, fan it with his hat? No, according to him, you ain't supposed to pour it out in your saucer at all. Well, I do know. When did they start that? I don't know. But I wish you could see how him and his wife hold a cup now. Hold a cup? They catch hold of it some way there to where their little finger sort of curls out to the side. It's sort of like a hook sticking out there. Well, what side is that? I don't know. I wondered about that. Could hang another cup out there, I reckon. Well, I don't believe I could ever sit on it and things, Lum. I just ain't turn that way. Oh, you won't have no trouble, Abner. <laughs> All you got to do is just keep your eye on the professor and do everything like he does. Yeah, but I'll be so far behind everybody else now. You won't be behind Caleb Weaver, I'll tell you that. Juan, that's the slowest man to catch on to stuff I ever seen. <laughs> Well, I reckon Caleb's been chewing horses too long to just jump right out in the middle of society. <laughs> well, he just don't use no judgment. He don't. Over there yesterday wanting to wrestle. Had an afternoon tea party, mind you. Wanted to bet the professor a dollar that he could throw him right there in the setting room. That easy. I bet a dollar he could, too. Not in the setting room, Adam. Why, he could throw that little run anywhere. That Caleb is out as a white oak stone. 
I seen him throw Big Boy Williams twice over at that party over there. Yeah, but it ain't good manners to wrestle that afternoon tea that away. Who said that? Professor Willoughby himself. Oh, well, he more like they just made that rule up himself to keep from losing that dollar. <laughs> I don't blame him. I wouldn't wrestle that kid a week on either. Well, now, them's the little things that the professors are learning. With. How to be gentlemen. Well, if he wasn't scared, why didn't he go out in the yard then if he never want to wrestle in a second room? Well, he says gentlemen don't wrestle one another at all. Well, who are they supposed to wrestle? Nobody. That's just it. Gentlemen don't wrestle. Oh, uh, well, now, he's just wasting his time trying to make Caleb a wrestling. He does love to show out how sound he is. Yeah, and we decide that the meeting while ago, if he don't stop bannering everybody to wrestle and lifting canners and stuff like that at these parties, we're going to throw him out of the FFTR. Now, now, you better wait till you get more members before you start to feel about anything. Yeah, we thought about that, too, so we decided to give him another chance. Yeah. Caleb is an all right fellow, all right, but he just don't care to take the society like the rest of us. He don't watch the professor and try to improve himself. Huh, that's the best way, huh? Just watch him. Yeah, be just like him. I like yesterday when they pass the sandwiches. It's just a little bitty thing, a couple inches square. Where? Passed them to Caleb, and he just rest in there and got a whole handful of them. You know how many the professor taken off the place? No. How many? One. Just one. One? And instead of cramming it all in his mouth at once, he just sort of nibbled on it. Well. Taking about 15 minutes to eat it. Oh, he just must not have been hungry. No, that's the way you're supposed to eat them. And another thing, you always stands up whenever a woman comes in the room. Gets clean up out of his chair. Well, I do know. Now, that may be the way they do in New York, but again, he loses his chair a couple of times down here, he'll cut that out, I doubt. Well, see, it just kept me jumping up and sitting down all afternoon to find. I don't know what it's for. Well, he must be a strange sort of a fellow. Well, I just wish I could be as quiet as he is. Women folks around town, they just took right up with him. Well, I've saw him a couple of times on the street, and I just don't like his look. That long hair rolled down his neck. If his manner just so good, why don't he get himself a hat cut? Well, he's a musician, Abner. That's the reason he wears his hair long that way. Him and his wife sung a solo together over at the Witter Avenue at his party last night. Awful pretty. Oh, uh, how was the party? Did you have a good time? Well, tolerably. It's awful hot. Men folks had to wear their coats because it was formal, you know. Yeah. I borrowed a coat from Squire with claw hammer tails on it, and I thought I would smother. Well, Elizabeth was awful disappointed because we never got to go to that. She thought when I bought that stock in the silver mine just the afternoon that we'd be invited then. No, no, it was just for the FFTR, the 400 set. Yeah, I know, but she thought we was automatic members when we bought that stock. No, no, that's the vote on them, too. Yeah. The reason they won't let nobody belong to FFTR is that they own some stock in the Great Western Stir and Silver Mining Company is because we don't want uh, nothing but millionaires in the club. You know, for long, all the stockholders will be rich. Well, I hope so. I'd hate awful bad to lose that hundred dollars I put in there, Rob. Oh, well, don't you worry about that. You ain't going to lose nothing long as I'm president of the company. Well, how is that, Rob? I, I never have figured out how you got to be the president. So just a few days ago, you flat broke, and all of a sudden, you blew them out here ahead of a big company and plenty of money from the way you acting. Well, I don't mind telling you, Abner. I mean, of course, I don't want you to talk it around. No, no. But the way it is, Squire seen an advertisement in the paper where a silver mine was for sale out there in Arizona, so he got on a train, went out there and looked at it. Uh-huh. And seen what a good proposition it was and bought it. Yeah, well, I know you made a trip out there sometime back. Well, he decided it was so good he wanted to let his friends around here in on it, so he took me in with him as a partner. Oh, you're a half partner now, huh? Well, no, not exactly. I'm in the company. See, I get 10% of all the cash I get for the stock that I sell. Of course, I'm buying a little stock along, too. Oh. See, when I buy stock that way, I don't have to pay full price. You don't? Uh, that's where I'm putting it over on Squire. Well. <laughs> See, I sell it to myself, and I get a 10% commission, so it costs me 10% less than anybody else has to pay. Yeah, well, I do know. Oh, it's the finest thing I ever got into. You just ought to hear Squire tell how thick the silver is out there in that mine. Go down in there and dig out big chunks of it with your bar hands. Sterling silver, too. Well, I do, you know. Yes, sir, that hundred dollars worth of stock you bought, I have no order to make you dependent for the rest of your life. And on top of that, you'll be a social line here in Pine Ridge, too. I'm going to see if I can't get you elected to some high-up office in the FFTR. Well, now, I don't know about that society business, Mom. I, I reckon I'm turned different from most, but I just don't care nothing about it. 
about that professor Willard. I just can't stand him. Well, you like him after you get to know him better. He more than likely ain't been very nice to you because he's awful particular about who he associates himself with. Now that you're FFPR, he'll more than likely start getting friendly with you. Well, I feel just stay as far away from me as you can. It'll just suit me a whole lot better. If I weren't good enough for him before I got in society, well, I ain't good enough now. For I ain't changed the mic at an all. Well, now, he's figuring on getting you in the men's greed club. Huh? I told him what an uncommonly good voice you had. See, he's going to be the teacher. Well. And just going to charge us a dollar a lesson. Now, in New York, he gets five dollars a lesson. Well, now, if he thinks he's going to charge me a dollar a lesson, he's got another thing for coming. I'll tell him that right now. He'll never get a cent of my money. Him with his long hair and them fancy and old flashes of hair. Well, you're going to be left out of things around here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think that's my ring now. No, you just tell a professor that I ain't interested in nothing that he's got anything to do with. Hello. Got him down, sir. Oh, hello, Elizabeth. Oh, how are you, honey? Good news. You and Paula did what? Singing lesson. From that Professor Willoughby? Well, now, you can just pay for him yourself, then, for I want... Huh? You told him that I'd join a Greek club. Well, you can just call him up and tell him that I... Well, honey, I don't want to take no singing lesson. Well, I don't care if it is a stall. I ain't a go... <laughs> well, Elizabeth, I bought that stock in the silver mine to get you in society, but I'll be dead blamed now if I'm going... Well, all right, honey. <laughs> all right. Goodbye. It seems that Mary is reluctantly but surely being dragged out into the swift current of the Pine Ridge social whirlpool. And now, here's an interesting unsolicited letter from Mrs. Francie Talkington of Flat Rock, Indiana. She says, I had a baby four months of age living entirely on your product. When he was just three weeks old, he had a dreadful illness and was sick for five weeks. I was told to put him on Horlicks, and that's just what I did. After that, I had no trouble at all. He held his own, never lost a pound during all of his illness. Now he's steadily growing and weighs every bit as much as he should. I can't thank Horlicks too much. Well, thank you, Mrs. Talkington. We know that for 50 years, the medical profession has recommended Horlicks for infant feeding. And we're glad to know of your success with your baby. Mothers, you can get Horlicks, you know, at your favorite drugstore. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks who now bid you all goodbye until tomorrow at the same time. <laughs>